in the 90s 93 to 96 we had something that was called golden handshake or re retreatment it changed the lives of kenyans forever many kenyans went to their uh, to their graves early because of that now what can you tell somebody let's say a millennium what it was what I would say is that uh, in 1990, 1990, the Soviet Union fell and the Eastern Bloc fell. The, uh, the Iron Curtain fell. So you find that in those days, the, I'm talking of Kenya, the Western countries used to give us a lot of money in order to, you know, we are strategically placed in the equator next to the uh, Red Sea and such and such. So there was need for us to be in their pockets. And they knew that, the Western countries, they knew that if they don't bribe us, I think that's the proper one, if they don't bribe us, then we will go and associate ourselves with the Eastern Bloc. So they used to use a lot of their taxes uh, to, to keep us busy. And uh, sending us money meant that anybody completing Form 4, we used to have only one university, that is Nairobi University. But uh, all uh, we, only, we only had one public university. We had a private university, Baraton, but we had only one public university. So reaching Form 4 and getting a Division 4, Division 4 is a, like a D today. So if you've reached Form 4, uh, Division 1 was an A, Division 2 is an equivalent to this B, Division 3 is a C, and Division 4 is a D. So getting just a D those days, you are guaranteed of a well-paying job. And when you get the well-paying job, it meant that apart from taking care of a few dis, uh, disciplinary things here and there and whatever, you are guaranteed. Imagine, after four four, you were 18 years. Then you are guaranteed twice your lifetime. That is for the next 36 years, you'll be, you'll be working, you'll be paid, and it's only one month that you'll be relaxed. So you knew that I'm 18 years, and for the next 36 years, I'll have a, a, a determined source of income. That is how it was. And you see, the, the, the government used to get a lot of money from Western countries. There was corruption, there was whatever, but they, even after that, because there was even a, a story that when donor money came from Western countries, at the airport, more than a half would take the same plane back to some countries there for private bank accounts. We had even some countries where you could go and open a bank account, and they don't write your name. They write, uh, you, you just agree that um, the bank account will be called XYZ. And you give them instructions that anybody coming with this password of uh, let's say MNOP, whatever he signs, because those checks are not supposed even to have your signature. They, they are not supposed even to be traced to you. So we have those Swiss accounts and whatever, which used to have um, funny names, funny le letterheads, and there was certain instructions that uh, if anybody comes with a certain combination of words and he or she demands any amount, then he or she should be given that amount in dollars and in small change. But even after such stealings and whatever, we still had a lot of money. It was guaranteed that once you complete your Form 4, with a Division 4, which is equivalent to today's, which is equivalent to today's D, you are guaranteed of a job for the rest of your, or for the next 36 years. You are 18, and you're going to work for 
37, not even 36, 37 for you to reach 55. Now imagine such a person. But then it reached a time when the Western countries st uh, started being uh, uh, refused to give us money or were reluctant to give us money. Why? Because of the various reasons. One, we were being bribed so as not to go to the, to the East, isn't it? Now the East is not there. So is there any need to bribe us? No need. Two, they say, Damu nizito kuliko maji. These people were trying, were, were closer to the European countries that were in the Soviet blocs. For two reasons. One, they are their fellow Caucasians, isn't it? Two, there was always a threat that the Soviet Union would still come out and be a strong or even stronger than what was used. So, as you see what is happening in Ukraine, the Western countries want to move into Ukraine and Russia is resisting. So it was that thing of pulling, pushing, pushing until such a way that the USSR will never ever go back. So these people are saying that what we want is that we will give you money, but uh, they came up with something that was called SAP, Structural Adjustment Program. Structural Adjustment Program was you, one of the reason, one of the things that they were complaining is that the, the wage bill was very high. A lot of people in other countries, in Kenya, especially people of my age, working for the government was what people used to like because one thing you are guaranteed you'll work until your retirement. And there were so few things, especially if you worked in places like Northeastern and Trukana. There are cases where you work in Trukana or West, Pok or West Pokot or Northeastern and you only work for three months. The other, you have just gone home and stayed and you get salary and hardship. So it, they, 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 they said that the country had a big wage bill. And then the Moi government asked them, how do we offload those people? They said, uh, anybody who wants to retire. For example, you are supposed to retire at 55. Now there was the handshake, golden handshake, what they called that, golden handshake. Uh, you are told, if you are 50 years and you wait until you reach 55, you'll go for the normal retirement. But if you decide to retire today, then the five years that are coming, we will pay you. We will also pay you so that we want to reduce the workforce. Uh, after going through those people who are 50 years and above, still the number of people employed were still high. Remember, when they are doing this, there are people who are completing Form 4. There are those people who are completing Form 4 and they want to join the workforce. One way of reducing workforce is to stop new employment. So new employments were stopped and they were now on the attempt to reduce the old. Then they moved to people up to around the age of 45. If you are in 45, they will calculate and give you lump sum money. Here were people, say somebody stays in Nairobi or any other urban area, suddenly is given a lot of money. Then when he is given a lot of money, he doesn't go home to invest or anything. He stays in the same house, lifestyle improves. But you see the problem is, even if you are given one million, those days one million was a lot of money. Even if you are given one million, and you go and buy something worth a hundred shillings, then it is a million less a hundred. The following day, two hundred is a million less three hundred. That way, that way, that way. So by the time that they, re they discovered that uh, everything is going to end, they relocated home. Relocating home, the only thing they could do is construct a small a semi-permanent house and there you find yourself you are 45 years broke nothing whatever those days the electricity penetration in the areas were very little and you are used to the electricity in urban areas those people went back to Nairobi going back to Nairobi they went to Kibira Kibira because that is where they could afford and became watchmen Becoming watchman, somebody is now elderly, somebody who was working in the middle. Job Group J. Job Group J, the rank of uh, 
the joining rank of a, a, a DO, or nowadays they call SEC, Assistant County Commission. So you find somebody who was like that way, now he's staying in Kibra as a watchman getting something, and then we had cases of people who died because of that stress and coldness. I'm happy that um, when I talk to the millenniums, uh, I, I, I go back to my age, when I was at their age. I find that uh, today's teenager, they think of starting their own businesses. They think of, some even want to work in a, a, a setup maybe for 10 years to gain a discipline and to gain finances to start their own businesses. But during our days, when we were your age, our dreams were to work for the government. You could find somebody saying, I'd want to be a doctor, a government doctor. I want to be a policeman. I want to be a teacher in a government school, so on, so on, so on. But this system of self-employment is good because self-employment has no retirement age. Thank you.